The delegate from Richmond City, Delegate Bourne. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, speaking to the measure. Delegate Bourne, you have the floor. Madam Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, um, I, like all of us, uh, have heard the profound and poetic, the powerful opposition that has come from many of the people that I serve with in the Black Caucus. And as we have considered this measure, this issue, we've heard about all the flaws, all the problems, all the shortcomings with SJ-18. And so as the session has gone on, I've said to myself, how did we get here? Many of my, most of, all of my colleagues are generally reasonable people. They're smart, they're good, they had, to, they, they had to be because they got here. We just don't get to the General Assembly by happenstance. And as I began to think, how we got here, a word, a very instructive word came to me. Gaslighting. For those of you that don't know what gaslighting is, gaslighting is a tactic in which a person or an entity, in order to gain more power, makes us question our reality. And you might say, well, how does that happen? We hear that it's nonpartisan or, or nonpartisan independent redistricting. Well, I think clearly the text of the amendment says it's not. We have legislators on there. There's no consideration for, for black people or communities of color. Two people can thwart the whole process. But you ask folks about this, they, de they deny they ever say these things, even though you've got proof. How else do we get gaslighted? Well, the people who are doing the gaslighting, they use the things that are nearest and dearest to you as ammunition. So Madam Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, I would suggest that when we pass this the first time, when this deal was concocted, might I add, and if I'm wrong, I'm sure somebody will correct me, there was not one person of color in the group that concocted this. There was not one woman in the room. And for those who are advocating this, to expect us to believe that you have all Virginians in your heart and your mind and in this flawed amendment, miss me with that. But you know what? You know what a good gaslighter does? They wear you down over time. And we have been worn down. Here's the interesting thing. And here is what I believe is at the crux of our concern and our opposition to this. We have heard over and over again we're going we're gonna to address communities of color. We're going to address this. We're going to address that through this or that, and this is how trust us. But you know what? You know what the members of the Black Caucus know? Do you know what drives and what, what brings about the passion that you hear in Black History Month and on other issues that are important of community colors from my mentors, Delegates Ward and Tyler and McQuinn who have seen and experienced unthinkable things that a man of 43 years fortunately has not experienced. They know, we know, their actions don't match their words. But because they, they're, they're good at what they do, they throw in positive reinforcement to confuse us because they know confusion weakens people. They try to line people against you. Madam Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, one of the things that I agree with Delegate Miari is when he said being a dad is more important than anything we'll do here. And I could not agree more. And Madam Speaker, there is one 
instance where I have absolutely felt bad about not being here. And that's when we took the vote on this the first time. But because I agree with Delegate Miari's, I was with my daughter at a daddy-daughter dance. And I know that not only was that the right thing to do, but opposing this amendment is the right thing to do. I'm always gonna be able to look her in the eye and say that. But over the last year, despite whatever, whatever season it was, I have felt condensation on my intelligence. Madam Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, it wasn't rain. So Madam Speaker, as we are very shortly past the 55th anniversary of Bloody Sunday, where our forebears were bruised, they were bloodied, they were beaten, all for fighting for what they knew was right. And that's what we're doing here today. That's why enshrining the ability of people of color, black people, in our ability to draw the districts is so critically important. Because our 400 year history is replete with our voices being silenced, not heard, or just outright ignored. That's what's driving us. And so Madam Speaker, if this speech, if my votes over the last hour caused me not to be back here, then so be it. Because I will walk for the rest of my life with my head held high, knowing that I did the right thing. So Madam Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, let's acknowledge and appreciate what's gone on and what we are about to do. We are about to enshrine in our Constitution an amendment that has been described on this floor as piss poor. I think my friend was being polite. Madam Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, I urge you, I implore you, hear our voices. Hear our voices. Please, do what's right and not what's easy. Vote no. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The delegate from Enrico, Delegate Bagby. Madam Speaker, I only talk when I think people are listening. I've observed this room, and people aren't listening. I looked at the individuals on this side of the aisle when Dele Delegate Price was talking. And those individuals that voted with the Republicans were on their phones. I only try to talk when people are listening. It's painful to see my colleagues speak with so much passion about a single issue and no one's listening. We started this, and I oftentimes speak in, in, in game, sports, analogies. We started down a few points in our argument this year. A lot of my friends on this side of the aisle came on board. I oftentimes like to observe, listen, as my friend from Norfolk said the other day, don't talk up much on the floor. Probably because most of the time when I talk on the floor, it's because it's something that I feel so passionate about. But My friend from Henrico, my colleague from Henrico, mentioned why he ran. 
to make a difference. And he talked about the gentleman that served before him. I would ask him, how would that gentleman vote today? What is the difference between your vote and his vote? I love me some Whitney Houston. And she, she has a song, How Will I Know? The only way I will know if you really love me is by your vote. Thank you, Madam Speaker.